Oh, he was just the fireball in everybody's life. You know, he just came in smiling, laughing, joking, and just loving everybody. You know, from the time he could talk and walk, that's just who he was. He loved saying I love you and he loved giving out hugs. Layton, oh, he was just my heart. He was my heart. He is my heart. Not was, not past tense, but he is my heart. He just had such a broad spectrum of things he loved to do and loved to get into. I mean, from making his own clothes to playing, you know, multiple different instruments to, you know, recording a song, you know, on his, on his laptop. He was just into everything. He was funny. He was um, passionate about what he liked. He was a very creative, very inquisitive little boy and teenager and young man. He was always exploring. We would go thrift store shopping and antique shopping or garage sale shopping to find different instruments. And so we would just buy what we could and he would learn them, pick them up within just no time at all. Six string guitar, 12 string guitar, trumpet, um, flute, violin, keyboard. I mean, you name it, he had his hands on it. When him and his brother were little, we, uh, you know, I'm going, I'm talking Jesus here. So I brought them to church from the time they were in nursery school. That was my purpose is to help to build a foundation to love God and love Jesus. And every year they went to church camp um, without fail every year through their elementary school years. And one day they came home from church camp and they always had friends, always had fun, just always talked about it. And they were ready to get baptized. They accepted Jesus at church camp and wanted to get baptized. We had a conversation because it's an important topic and I wanted to be sure they understood. And they did. Drugs weren't a part of his life. It was a very open conversation, you know, in our house because, you know, a single dad to him and his brother. Um, so I always had to be a little bit ahead, um, just, you know, every day talking about it. You know, he was not a user or an addict or um, it just, that wasn't the case. Uh, this was, took one pill. I got a phone call uh, between four and five in the morning. I don't remember the exact time. And I just remember seeing Williamson County pop up. And I knew something wasn't right. They just told me, you know, I needed to, to get there. I got a call at um, 5.15 on Sunday morning, January 22nd, from the police department, from the Williamson County Sheriff's Office. They told me that my grandson was in distress and that we needed to get to where he was. Rushing out of the house and you know, his younger brother is at home. So I'm having to wake him up and I'm frantic and, you know, I get out there. It was cold, cold. It was dark. It was, you know, 5.15, 5.30 in the morning. We were outside that house for five hours um, just waiting. We couldn't go in. They wouldn't, you know, of course, tell us anything. So we just, just waited. They say they're working on him and... You know, time passes and they come out and they say, you know, we we weren't able to save him. Then we got the call and came out and said that they couldn't they couldn't save him. When they told me they weren't able to save him, you know, my family, they were out there with me and we were waiting. Um, when they finally told me, I told my family I couldn't be there. I went home. 
I took a shower, I got dressed, and I went straight to church. Um, and I think that's why I am able to heal the way I am, uh, because that's where I ran to. That's where I, I found and sought comfort. Honestly, I just have such a peace about me. Um, I mean, only with God am I able to walk through this the way that we are and with our family the way that we are. Only, you know, I just can't say that enough. I mean, I don't see how people can get through something this traumatic without Jesus. I mean, it just blows my mind. I'm, I truly, truly have a peace because, you know, somebody had asked me one time, and it's like, well, to me, I think Jesus might be calling people home because we're fixing to have a shit show down here on earth. And I really don't care to be in the shit show. So, you know, Layton's, Layton's up there watching over us. And I know that there's a bigger plan that we don't know. We can't see the bigger plan. You know, I walk by faith, not by sight. And so my faith is what carries me. From the moment all of this happened, I knew I couldn't let myself get consumed in any of it uh, because I do have my younger son that I have to be there for. And, you know, we still have to have a life, you know, after this. Um, so I let, you know, the detectives do their job and just live my life minute by minute. The biggest setback in all of it is government, you know, it's, it's political, you know, not pro wanting to prosecute uh, certain people or, you know, getting held up at the medical examiner's office for the autopsy and, you know, law enforcement can't do their job until they have that report. So during that time, you know, these people are just there, you know, still passing this stuff out. But the law enforcement is doing their job um, the best they can, you know, until they get to a point where their hands are tied. This should produce multiple arrests, um, not just a singular arrest stemming from, from Layton's case. You know, it's fortunate that they got the information they could, you know, from his phone um, to be able to follow up on that and really, you know, do their best to hold these people accountable um, as they should do with all of them, you know. Friends that have just come up and talked to us and just, it's the same, it's the kind of a repeat occurring word. I mean, they just describe him as light. He was just light, you know. A friend came up to me and said he always knew when I was depressed and he always made sure that I was okay and he just loved on me. I mean, these are 16-year-olds. They don't talk like that. And it was everybody. He was love and light. And for a grandparent, I mean, if somebody's describing your grandchild that way, I mean, way to go, you know, that's all you can hope for is your grandkids and your kids to be love and light to others. I mean, how amazing is that legacy? I mean, his legacy is going to be who he brings to Jesus, I think, and then his legacy is a ripple effect so somebody else doesn't die from this. Bullshit. One pill can kill. Just remember that, you know, we are out here telling these stories but what happened to them is not all they are. You know, Layton was a loving kid. <laughs> a great son. I'm sorry. <laughs>